and hello and hello and welcome to the cup the currently unnamed podcast i love my music i can't even lie i just love the vibe this is a vibe i've requested this it was down down too low and i had to turn it up and i was like oh no it's okay. I, I, I've requested this every time I'm on the podcast that the music is played during the intros because it just gives off good vibes, people. And I am Lana, your resident diva, here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea. So if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up because I love the tea. And today I am drinking strawberry lemonade because why not? And I'm drinking it from this beautiful cup mug Uh 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 you see it you love it you want it and if you want it you can always get it from my etsy shop and i'll post the banner link below and i'll post a a banner in a little while where you can shop my etsy shop period come get your own cup mug and be a part of the team period the first official piece of merch. Mm-hmm. Officially. I love mm-hmm. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm Logan Murphy. I say something gay. Gay. We're drinking water somewhere. It's over here somewhere. But I'm also drinking Red Bull Amber. Mm-hmm. It is strawberry apricot. And it's very good. I highly recommend. And hi. I'm Ashley. Ashley Keenan. I'm here to talk about one of my favorite all-time things, Australian Survivor! We're back, baby! Woo! Boom, 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 boom. Puts in sound effects. Um, I'm so excited. that. Um, I should be drinking more Gatorade, but I'm not. So if I need to get a little spicy, I have my fireball ready, okay? As you always. As you always do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go. As you should. Just want to put this up, you know, so people know. Go to Lana G's Creations on Etsy.com and you can buy that beautiful cup mug. A Here. very inexpensive mug, I will say. Just saying. It gives the best tea. Do it. Yeah, always. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Okay. But yeah, we are talking Australian Survivor. We are back. Yes. I've never felt se- happier. <laughs> I've I've I'm very excited. I didn't think, you know, a year ago this time I was watch watched the first season of Survivor Australia for me. And I was like, I actually really do like this season. So I'm back. And here we go. Okay, you can cut the music now because I think oh, we're, we're gonna I jump forgot. into the. I forgot the music was still there. Because because you, <laughs> you're vibing, you're vibing too hard. That's I really was does. honestly, I was vibing. The music just makes you vibe, people. It does, it does. But uh, so Survivor Australia starts like Survivor Australia do, very cinematic, very dramatic. We are in Samoa. Samoa, mm. heroes versus villains in Samoa. The first and I, time in what three seasons? I think that we're filming. It would two. be this. It would be the third because the last one was CBC four or two. So the fourth season, two two seasons ago, or three yeah. seasons, two seasons, two seasons. We can count because <laughs> we be in blood versus water. <laughs> blood versus water. I think we didn't know that, but yeah, mm. sure, we're, but. We're, yeah, we didn't. They didn't say that enough for for me. Blood versus water. I, I was. I kind of forgot that that was an actual season. It it's red blood versus, versus blue. water. It's red versus blue. We forgot the names halfway through the season. Oh <laughs> yeah, you're so right. <laughs> I could never. But, but no, could never. And J J uh, J uh, JLP. God, why did I? Yeah, he wouldn't let me forget that it was blood versus water. He wasn't. Just like he's not going to let us forget that this is heroes versus villains. This is what it is. And so, like I said, they start off very dramatic in the jungles, and they're picking up the players in this van that looked like it was broken down, but started up and people jumping on vans and. 
they they always do a cinematic entrance where they're they're hopping and grabbing everyone and then like out of the, all the franchises i think the best 20 minutes of the season for australia with their editing goes to that and then everything else goes downhill don't tell them i said it <laughs> I, I agree i agree mm-hmm. i i do it's just like oh wow it was very you know dramatic and cinematic and very like it should be a movie but it was good. I enjoyed watching it, I guess. We got a lot of backstories on some people and, you know, a lot of the returners because they had a story to tell. They are returning from whatever season they were on. I never watched anybody on any season except Jordy. Jordy is the only person that I particularly watched their original mm-hmm. season. Yeah. And Nina. And Nina. They are, yes, that was Nina's original season. So Jordy and Nina are the only people I've watched their original season. So I was like, I have no idea who these attorneys are. But it's nice to see them. It's, it's sure. Great. I'm excited to watch and decide if I care for them or not. And as, you know, the Australian uh, Survivor Super fans that Ashley and I are, you know, this season was packed with a lot of really good returners, I would say. We got all-stars and we got a really good bunch. And this kind of gave us, I don't know if you would agree, Ashley, it kind of gave me a lot of the other people that I would have wished we had seen on an Mm all-stars, but I'm very happy to see back. Yeah, and I think we got a few of the standouts from after all-stars era, and then we got the people that they should have got for all-stars. Sean, uh uh-huh, like seeing him on the screen, he should have been back in all-stars. I don't know if they wanted two pretty boys again, you know, with the the David versus Sean of it all for for all-stars. Who else should have came back? You know, Sam, shocking season one, Sam, uh, mateship jumping from the gun like uh yeah. great to see some i don't know like the returning original hero of the franchise coming back so i think yeah. two that way uh really great but i'm so excited to see them all again on my tv screen i'm, ah. I'm thrilled there's so many good there's so many good people i'm gonna throw out this graphic it's gonna go over all of our beautiful faces but here is our cast as far as returners are concerned um on the hero side we have sam from season one uh, Haley, the winner of Brains versus Brawn. Flick, also from Brains versus Brawn. Sean from season three. Four, yeah, that was Chan- four. 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 Chan- yes, easy two. Yeah, and uh, Nina from Blood versus Water. Um, and then on the villain side, as far as returners, Shawnee, the first three-time player on Australian Survivor. Um, Simon is back. George. Jordy is back. Um, Jackie is back, and Stevie. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Shawnee being a three-time three-timer and not even like being a the thought of a target. Well, we'll get to that. We'll but, talk. You we'll know, get into it. We'll get to that. But like Shawnee being the first three-timer feels correct, and it is. It is in That's my soul. Valid. It, it it's valid. Feels, yeah, it's completely valid. Um. Yeah, well, do we want to do some, like, initial thoughts based on the first week of people, like, standout people, or do we want to just dive in? Um, I think we could do standouts, I think, you know, and then get why we thought they liked it as we go forward. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, standouts, I think, do you want to do new, a new one and a returner each, maybe? Sure. Mm-hmm. I like that. Maybe. Um, Ashley, do you want to start? Sure. So, for my new um, one for villains uh liz liz came out of the gates she came and said i'm gonna find a strong returner connect with i'm gonna be willing to look at votes i'm gonna be doing this that so i'm very excited to see what liz goes forward a uh, young new girl getting that good energy and then um for me i'm gonna pick <laughs> i'm simon uh of course as you can see my name obviously big stan uh, i think he's coming back he came to play he has his last season in his head of where he fucked up, where he's I don't know, I'm so swear, but I am. Um, <laughs> where, where he went wrong, you don't he, care. Oh, good, 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 because it's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> he went wrong and he said, I'm gonna fix it, and he's back with his bestie Jordy, and I'm so excited. Those are my two, yep. Lana. Go ahead. Uh, well, oh, um, oh, I can go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay. Um Let's see. Stand up from week one. Newbie. 
I'm gonna say I need to flash actually this back up really quick. Um, huh, newbie. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Sharni. We didn't get to see a whole lot of her in this first week, but I really like her energy. I like what we've seen from her so far, um, and I, I'm really interested to see how she's gonna move forward and play the game. So she was someone that I when she had confessionals, the few that she had this week, I was really enthralled by what she was saying. And obviously we didn't see a whole lot of the heroes. We'll talk about that. But I I was I was very gravitated towards the character that is Sharni from what we see in the first week. Um, Returner, it would be incredibly obvious for me to say Shawnee, so I'm not going to. And instead, I think I'm actually gonna say Haley. I was really impressed with the way that Haley managed the first few um, the first few challenges, the first few days on the island. Um, obviously, she is the only winner in this bunch, so there is an immediate target on her back, and we hear her talk a lot about that. And I love that she she's going into this season immediately thinking about threat management and mm -hmm. how she's going to diminish her threat level to the point where she's not even considered a target among the heroes moving forward. So it's going to be, it's Sharni and Haley for me. If she knows pain management, she can do a uh, strategy. Exactly. Management. Yeah. She's a pain <laughs> yes. management specialist, Lana. I don't know if you were aware of that, but that's her occupation. So. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So mine are a little, not very conventional and probably a little weird and probably because somebody who I'm going to mention didn't have the best week, but okay. I still felt like they were a standout and I can understand the reason why. So for the villains for me, it's Mimi. Now mm -hmm. I liked Mimi this week. I enjoyed that. She was like, not afraid to speak up when she felt something was off. She was willing to do risk risky things in order to you know position herself better and i'm like if you're going to play this game you have to do some make some moves was it great at all the time no she wasn't like you know she could have been a little bit more stealthy in some of her moves and i know we'll talk about it later but like yeah she i, I felt like i just liked watching her play this game and she stood up to a bunch of villains when she didn't have to and was like i don't agree with this and this is just my thoughts she i just like how she just didn't back down from you know her her truths and her how she felt and i enjoy watching her play um for the and it's crazy because mm, my two standouts were both on the villains i didn't think about that uh <laughs> mine, mine were both Same. on the heroes now that <laughs> I, I think was a about villainer. it I'm both, I mean, both of mine are heroes, which is interesting. I painted my yeah. purple for them. Uh, both of my stand up <laughs> because the other one, the returner, was Stevie. Hear me out. Because I just like that Stevie is playing this game this time around. Like he knew what he messed up. Like, like you said with Simon, he understood where he messed up. Yes, he has some blinders on. He does for Shani, which, okay, sure. I feel like he has to remove them a little bit in order to advance and figure out. And I think he has done that in the episodes, in the later episodes that he I've watched. So he's he realizes where he needs, but his focus, he's like, look, I know what I have to do. I'm going to let them think I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. I'll be that person that you write my name down. I'm okay with you writing my name down as long as I don't get the votes to go home. It's okay that you want to, you know, because every time you write my name down and I survive the vote, that's another story that I, that could help me in the end. Like I've been in trouble this whole time and <laughs> I still managed to be here. So if he makes it to the end, he can have those notches. Like people will come in and write my name down every time we went to the vote, blah, blah, blah. I just feel like he's he's playing up the fact that he's older. He might be kooky. He's playing up the fact that, you know, people might underestimate him as a player. But he is smart. 
This man has read the art of war. He is really focused on what he wants to do. All that kookiness and craziness is not the player who he is. It's just who he wants them to think he is. And I appreciated that this week. I really did. So, yeah, Stevie. That's, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, ha- I have to think about Stevie, the character on this TV show, and not what I know Stevie to be outside of Australian Survivor. I don't know anything about this man outside of Survivor Australia. And I honestly don't care to know because I don't, I'm not that invested in him. It's just, yeah, he might be the biggest whatever supporter or politically yes. first. Yeah, which is whatever. I, I've come to realize in my life, if I cut off everybody or be mad at everybody who doesn't support the same things I support or appreciate what I appreciate, I probably would never watch anything. <laughs> I would probably never watch TV. I would probably never have people I would like to talk to. And I don't mind an open debate with people if about their differences. So we can have, a, a, we, we can degree, disagree. And I'm not saying agree to disagree. We could disagree. It's just, if you were to have an open debate about it, let's do that. But it is fine. But yeah, I just, I don't know who he is. Don't care who he is. This character that I'm seeing on this show, I like how he's portraying this this game. He, he's playing this game. That's pretty Perfect. much it. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of people on this cast where if we wanted to talk about their outside, we could have a whole other podcast on their life. And we're, we have takes, yeah. we have thoughts, but I'm going to leave that for a different day and a different drink. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've slowly started evolving into a very, very similar mindset as you, Lana. And I think a lot of that was like, especially the last couple seasons of Survivor have really done that for me, where I'm like, eh, however you are outside of the game, whatever, I'm going to focus more on the character that you're playing on this show and what you're doing on the show. So I, exactly. I definitely agree. I, I agree with that. I also didn't love Stevie, the character, on his first season. So I will say that. Like, I just, Stevie's not my absolute favorite person. That's mm. just that's just me personally. And the thing but. is, he's not my favorite person in this cast. He's just mm-hmm. a standout for this week for me. Sure. Mm. That's, and I think that's valid. Sense. And I think it helps uh, lead a lot of the storylines of the first few episodes, is the Stevie of it all. Mm-hmm. But... Let's talk about the first opening reward challenge or how they get started after coming together, seeing that it's heroes versus villains. They see JLP, OJP, oh Lord have mercy. JLP, you got it. I said it right. Oh, because, okay, I have wrestlers in my head. His initials are JBL. And so I'm thinking of him at the same time. Okay, but JBL, um, he JLP. Oh God, never mind. Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. That's who John- I'm calling. Jono. 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 Jonathan. Uh, they meet Jonathan. I always like seeing Jonathan because Jonathan's lovely to look at. So I, 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 of water. He's very nice looking. Isn't he day. great? He's great. He's just uh, great. He's aged Love. like. A good fine wine, mm-hmm. fine wine. I, I do, but they all there, and oh, so the yeah. challenge. The challenge is now that they have to go and grab all of these, whatever they can grab, whatever they can grab, put them on a uh, two platforms, a, two platforms, and everybody has to get up on all these platforms in order to keep everything. Oh, I'm just, <sighs> this, it's funny. I'm just laughing this, thinking about it. Yeah, because this was the fun. This, this, uh, this show. I think for me, I don't know about y'all, but this showed how I felt. I was like, "This villain tribe is gonna be a mess and a half. They are going to be an absolute train wreck when it comes to competition." Because they were just all over the place. Like it was like simply grab all the materials that you think you need, put them on the platform. Everybody get up. Then everybody put the stuff on top on the second once it's on the second platform can't nobody steal it it's safe da 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 ah uh, the heroes were working in a great way they were moving they were grabbing stuff they were putting stuff on their platform they had somebody up there grabbing stuff to help keep it on the platform and then that job was to move it and transfer it to the second platform 
they were doing really well. Some stuff got stolen from the villains, which, okay, that's what's going to happen. <sighs> but, y'all. <laughs> Can we talk about, like, my key moments? Not even, like, what was won or got. It was the first, let's, let's see. Um, Matt jumps on Simon, who then <laughs> jumps on Jordy, who then just has a a fighting match and then you hear george going this is not productive do something else and then you see, and then that's funny and then you see simon stealing from the heroes which is hilarious but then at the end you have simon coming and just trying to like grab onto sean as he's trying to get up to win and grabs the butt for fun because why not um why not we, all, we, we have all a lot of butt like, stuff we're good for yeah oh, it was a lot of butt stuff and a lot of butt stuff here. i was not mad at it <laughs> no i really i really wasn't i just <laughs> I love the dichotomy of how chaotic the villains were in this challenge. Like, juxtapose that with before the challenge when everybody's talking and Anjali is like, oh, we're absolutely going to dominate. The villains are the best tribe. We drink hero blood for breakfast. We're just going to absolutely dominate everything. And then they fall apart the moment they start a challenge. It yeah. was hysterical. I, I loved every moment of that. I couldn't stop laughing because it was just like, really? You're going to dominate? No. No. Where, it was, where? where was the dominance? It was not It was present. on the butt stuff. It was like the only <laughs> time that we saw it was... <laughs> I mean, otherwise, if you're going to win a physical challenge, they have to have some type of one-up on the brain, because uh, they, 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 they've got Sean. They've I got, mean... They've got hot men that are strong. I, and I mean, like, I get what Simon was trying to do at the end of that, when he was trying to grab onto Sean and pull him back down. I'm like... But you don't even have your torch yet. It doesn't even matter if you grab him down and yank him down 20 times. You still have to run back and get that torch. And he's just going to jump up there and win anyway. Like, it's over. You lost. You lost bad. I think Simon is doing it yeah. for friends. He's like, I'll do this for the meme, for the friend, <laughs> and for the shot. You know, like, he's like, shout out to besties here. I know we all want this. <laughs> all right. Because I was just like, Sean was literally rut, like trotting, not even running, like jogging. Like, doo, doo, doo. Get that, that Baywatch music that behind him. Bay, right. like, that's yeah. what we were doing. Mm. He was slow running back with his torch, like, I got it. The this. hero music might as well be in the background, like do 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 do. Honestly, <laughs> like truly, genuinely honest. Like truly, it was so bad. I was like, just let him go. You lost. It's over. Yeah. You're done, son. You're done, son. But you're done. A, <laughs> the heroes were the winner. Period. Point blank, and dominantly won. Like mm. it was no question about. What was happening? So, congratulations to the heroes. I was happy because Nina was the hero, and as long as Nina's Nina safe won. and happy, Nina wins. Nina wins. Yay, Nina. Nina wins. I mean, I don't know if you can tell listeners or watchers, we are Nina standing out on this podcast here, um, and it's not just because we're American. It's mostly because she's Nina. Wait, look, you Nina. know where she lives though? In North Carolina, do you know where that's at in the states? Because you live no. here. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I mean, it's far. It's far, far, far. east. Oh, okay. Far. Well, I live here half time, so you don't need to tell me. Just cause yeah, because right. the other half of the time you're on a cruise. Yes, no, I got it. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Next, look, perfect segue, Ashley. Perfect yeah. segue into my rant that is about to happen because here we go. <sighs> sit back and buckle up people because i have things to say yeah fireball might be in order mm. ashley i'm gonna mm, no i'm just gonna drink my red bull uh, mm. because if we have not seen the clips most everybody has if you haven't there oh you haven't watched the show yet which is fine if you haven't but there's the clip out there where rogue a newbie by the way newbie rogue she comes up, she gets, we get back to the hero's camp and Rogue is just, I don't know. I don't she, like from the very beginning, from the time she opens her mouth, I already don't like this woman. I already didn't like this woman. And it, even before she got to the comment, 
her just like, so who's the hero around here? I don't, I don't know. Who's the hero? I'm actually really a hero because I save animals and from Which poultry. Which is lovely. Great. But then, but then you care about animals, but you don't have the common sense to, and the decency to care about what you say to humans. But okay. Because you chose this moment to tell this Afro Latina woman who is from North Carolina that you are more African American than she is because you're from Africa or you lived in Africa. You're not even from Africa. You lived in Africa. I think her quotes was, I'm more African than you. She said, I'm more African American than you because I lived in Africa and America. You lived in Africa and you live in America, but you're not from any of them. So I can be Australian if I live in Australia. Half the time. Let's go do it. Let's do it. I want to be Australian. Let's go. (laughs) Let's go live in Australia for six months and you can claim that you're Australian. Yeah. Because you live there. I'm like, baby girl, excuse, excuse me. Um, excuse. Okay. Um, white people PSA from me to you. And this is what I'm going to say. Your proximity to blackness or Africanness does not make you African or black. Just want to say that just because you have people in your life who are your friends or your family or you're married or you have kids who happen to be half black, African, Latina, Asian, it that doesn't make you become that race or that ethnicity. It doesn't make you become that. You're still who you are. I could be married to a white man. And have half white children. But that does not make me white. And I can't say I'm more white than you are because my husband's white and my kids are half white. So vice versa that. You can't be married to somebody who's black or live somewhere where black people live or live in America where Americans live or live in Africa where Africans live and decide you're more African-American than somebody who actually is African-American. I... I, uh, what and she just said that with the straightest face and was so disrespectful and condescending in her tone like oh i know where she was trying to say east north carolina nina said i live in north carolina it's on the east coast you know east far east from oh i know where that is i lived in america half my half the time I, i live in america i know where it is like okay you just met this woman. Nina don't know where you live half the time of your life. She didn't know you. She didn't know you. Raise your hand if you knew Rogue before Survivor AU. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, none of us. Well, none of us. We, don't know we don't know you, Rogue. So I'm sorry that Nina didn't know that you lived in America half the season and then Africa another half and then apparently Australia another half, even though it's only you can't live places two halves, three halves mm. of a place. The math ain't math in It ain't math in my girl. I'm higher than math because I'm more math than you are. (laughs) Apparently. (laughs) Because baby girl lives in Australia half the time, America half the time, and Africa half the time, which... (laughs) She's superhuman. That's what it is. (laughs) I mean, because she is the... She's the only hero on the tribe, apparently. And I think... There's more comments than just the Nina one. Like that. No, that was just one. That was, she went off on, oh, so are you circumcised? Are you, oh, excuse me? I, I would never be. I don't need to know your business. She was just, I would, oh my God. I, if I was the hero's tribe, that first day I'm like, we're losing this dish challenge so she can go home. I can't have her here any longer than she has to be here. But that's that's me i don't like this woman i don't think i will ever like this woman there's no coming back for this woman for me for me i don't care if she goes and wins this whole game or does whatever i will never like this woman she Um, better not i I can't 
Um, I'll say, like, you know, it's fine to have a character. It's fine to be a little unhinged. But once you add in racism and you add in anti-Semitism and you add in ageism, probably, I don't know, like, like <laughs> I'm just any of those sprinkles. Like, it just doesn't help. And I don't want to watch you on TV. Get off. I, I don't. I want her gone, like, now. But I'm willing to just wait but until they – but. The, I just found it very annoying for her to sit there and act like she is more than everybody. It's just more like everything is a competition and a one upmanship for her. And I'm more this than you. And I'm more this than you. And <sighs> baby, you are nothing. Nobody knew you before you came on here. And after this stunt, I will never want to know you after you leave the show. The lion who took a bite of your ass was doing the right thing somehow. <sighs> right. I wasn't wish you would have took a bite out of your head. I'm I'm <laughs> sorry. I maybe shouldn't have said that, but I just yeah. I, uh, he, and you know, I think it just really dampered the rest of the episode for me. Kind of like it took me a really hard time to get over that fact that that she said it. But I will say I am very happy that Channel 10 in Austra- Survivor Australia showed it so we can see the true character of this awful human being oh oh one more thing one last thing one more rant i have to say because i've been seeing a lot of people responding about how nina handled the situation was like oh nina handled it so well she handled it so she was so kind she was so sweet i appreciate her handling that way i'm tired of having to be sweet. I'm tired of having to be kind to people and their ignorance. I'm tired of us having to say, I'm handling it in a nice, polite way because it makes everybody else feel comfortable about me not going off and popping off over somebody saying something so ignorant and just disgusting to me. I'm sick of being nice. I'm sick of being polite. I'm sick of everybody people of color having to be nice to protect the feelings of our of white people. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. I'm tired of us being polite to protect your uncomfortableness when you're saying the ignorant stuff. So if Nina would have popped off and snapped on Rogue, it would have been justified. And anybody who says anything different and say she shouldn't, she should get over it, I would be so annoyed because why? Because if we said something ignorant and hurt your feelings, she would have had no problem going off and how we hurt her feelings or start crying about how Nina hurt her feelings. How could she say that to me? I'm not racist, but you make racist remarks. You Mm. make stupid remarks. So I'm tired of having to be polite and be kind to for people to feel like, Oh, she handled it well. She handled it. She would have handled it well if she went off. She would have handled it well if she didn't. Mm-hmm. It's her. I just, I'm just tired. I'm tired of having to be polite to protect white people's feelings. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Don't I'm be. just not. Don't I'm you just never dare be sorry. Don't I'm you just dare be sorry. Not. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just not. Mm-hmm. I'm so tired. So Nina could have handled it anyway. She decided to be polite and that's fine but if she would decide to pop off and call rogue out of her name i'd be like and guess you deserved every bit of it sis you did it so i'm just tired that is my last rant i'm sorry the but. edit for me too makes me think that because they shoot to Haley right during that that scene i think there's gonna be something that's gonna like nina and Haley are gonna talk about and be like I don't know if it's going to be like, how does this make you feel? What do you want me to do? Because I heard that and I thought it was wrong. Like, I hope that conversation happens. So, like, there shows that, like, Nina isn't fighting a fight by herself. Alone. Because the diversity factor on this season still, I'm just like, Australia, y'all always lacking. Y'all stay lacking. Y'all forever be lacking. I mean, sure. It's it's some diversity. It, well, it is. Let it alone that, her being American, too, right? The only American along with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's what I was going to bring up as well is just like this constant problem that we have and we see it very evidently on Australian Survivor but it also happens on other Australian reality TV shows you look mm-hmm. at Australian Big Brother you look at um, the Australian ba- Bachelor franchises the Bachelor franchises I will say are a lot better when it comes to diversity they've done a lot to acknowledge the indigenous peoples of Australia and those sorts of things at least from the seasons that I've seen I could be wrong 
but they've done a lot um, more things when it comes to diversity. And so I will, I will give them their flowers in that regard. But it just, again, highlights this diversity issue that we continue to have in Australian reality television. Because um, I will say the, the diversity here could be better, mm-hmm. um, should be better, mm-hmm. uh, better than past seasons. So I will say that, um, but still, it definitely could be better. And we'll talk about, you know, the eliminations that we had this week. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I, I applaud that there is there is seemingly growth on a diversity standpoint. But, like, there are people of color in Australia. We sure. know several. And sure. they're lovely. And it's just like, like, Black people exist all over the world. <laughs> Like, why are we, it's 2023, why are we still having having to have these conversations, and why are Black people specifically still having to defend themselves? It's stupid. Y'all shouldn't have to do that. People Absolutely. of color should not have to do this anymore. And and please let me not just think, I'm just talking about Black people, because yes, we have Asian representation, but where's the Latin representation on this show? I'm sure it's Latin people in Australia. I'm sure it's other people, like... Has it's there like, ever been an indigenous person on Australian Survivor? Why is there not indigenous people on Australian Survivor? So. I don't why think is so. that not? That, that's in crazy to me when there are mm-hmm. a huge group of people in Australia of indigenous people and they have not even been represented on Survivor ever. Like yeah. crazy. That's it's, insane. Well, and, and indigenous people in Australia still have like, they're very much so in the same like fight of like, Oh, you this yeah. is what you stole from us like this is our homeland style too so like they deserve to have their story told too and will they girl we know probably australia not. is still struggling unfortunately yeah. probably yeah. not it echoes a lot of the same problems we have with indigenous peoples in america as well because mm-hmm. um, yeah. mm-hmm. i don't think i still don't think there has been a um an indigenous or uh native american person on Survivor in the U.S. I don't think uh, there's been any. There may have been some on Amazing Race. They tend to do better with with the with the casting. I don't think there's been one on Big Brother. And if there was, I apologize. Um, I, don't think I hope there. Not, I hope there was, but I don't know. I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. Don't think and so. if they were, if there were, they had. It wasn't like well known. Like mm-hmm. they didn't come out and say I'm Native or Indigenous yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so I don't know. It's a big topic, and like we all know that there's many things that Channel 10 and Survivor Australia needs to get together, and we will continue to tell them until we're blue, red, green in the face, whatever color comes first. Period. Yellow and, yellow and purple, purple this season. Mm. Oh, sorry, you're right. Sorry, wrong colors. <laughs> so sorry. <clears throat> no, very much. But yeah, I know. Like this, this topic, it's deep. It's needed to happen. But that's like they throw it right in the middle of the episode. And I'm like, how do I move on? Yeah, it was very like, ugh, but you know, we move. We, we move. We do. We had to move. <laughs> <laughs> we moved. But yeah. So after that, we go meet the villains. They are dejected because they have nothing. They lost. They have. <laughs> they, they have, have nothing. 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 Okay, I'm upsetting you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let me try to match octave for octave with Lana. No, let me try to go an octave under Lana. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> oh, no, thank this you. This is the energy that we bring to the villains tribe. Mm-hmm. This is exactly this. Just for chaos. Sure. Yeah. It's chaos because they're chaotic. They're chaotic, crazy mess. But they're smart, crazy. Like this is the crazy part of the villains. A lot of them, and I've said, I said this before we came on on live. I said that um, I feel like a lot of the villains are some. Well, some of the villains are acting up their roles as villains. But I feel like if you met them in real life and you like jumped at them, they'd be like, ah, scared because they don't seem like that that tough. But I think they think they're villains because of the way they can manipulate people or the way they could get a job done. Maybe not scary villains, but maybe like I'm smart, you know, mm. kind of villain. I just find it so funny that of the newbie villains that we have, two of them are journalists. 
I mean, like, as someone who's in the semi the field, I'm like, I was gonna say, <laughs> Ashley, do you have thoughts on this? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, please, because <laughs> I have a couple of them. So please, Ashley. I Me, mean, I'm a small town journalist. I think of myself as a hero. I think I report on, you know, all of this, the local, helpful, like those human interest stories. But these people, are digging through garbage cans. They're like invest. So I'm like, I can get it. I understand why, but it doesn't do a good thing for the career path of journalism, especially in the era of hashtag fake news. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. That's my mm-hmm. thing. It's small. I mean, but Angeli was like, I worked for CNN for several years, and so and so, and I have done this and talked to kings and queens and so many politicians and yada yada all. So I know how to be a villain. I make people cry. And they was like, I never told, I never thought I'd tell you that. And I, t- <sighs> Anjali got on my nerves. I'm just going to put that out there. Can I I'm say, not a I, fan. I loved her in the one episode we got her. I can't even lie. I found her so delusionally entertaining. I found her to be so <laughs> delusional. Sure. I, I love I like, love her lines. Just like the yes, liners. You know? The one liners. She was a yeah. one liner factory. Like I loved it. No, it's it's uh she she gave a lot of the villain energy without like knowing how to actually run or work the show. She yeah. they, they threw her in first day and said, Good luck. Because yeah. <laughs> girl, do you think she's seen Survivor? No. No, because no, she was working at CNN <laughs> for so many years. Yeah, she had time to be watching Survivor. I, I will say one of the things, since we're on the topic of the villains, kind of just like, we're not doing this in any sort of sequential order. We're just, we're just talking. But I want to talk about, not George, but the George edit. Mm. Um, and Bring it just up, the dominance of the George, and I would like to throw it to Ashley. I think <laughs> Ashley needs to bring it out. I, I, I think he, I need you, I think you need to bring it out. Because if we can have King George... We can definitely have Queen Ashley. So bring it out. And please. Queen Haley, but yes. Mm, this is not straight. Okay, we're going with it off center. Hi. I Queen love it. Ashley. I love it. Because George is off centered. <laughs> unhinged, uncentered, uncontrolled. Anyway, so Queen Ashley here to talk about King George, the editor of all, and how you have to be on a tribe with him. What energy you have to give. You have to be full of yourself and put a fucking tiara on. <laughs> that is the energy you have to put on. You have to match the crazy. So um, I'm here to talk. This is the rant I want to give before I have to leave. Um, so Simon, a lot of people online are talking about Simon doing a little bit too much, being a little too too much, uh, too, too too much villain, too too much this and that and the next. Well, honey, you walk onto a beach and you see the energy that King George, the cockroach, the blah, 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 whatever name he gives himself in that moment. Well, you have to match the energy that he is giving to the episode so i think that's something the edit the, the you obviously can tell the producers love george which is like he's a character i get it I, you love him hate him he's a character but like you have to match that same exact energy so yes you have to be a little more devious you have to be a little more out there you might have to be a little more uh, unhinged to, to to get that to get that main like like edit so i don't know like george gets a lot of airtime in this episode regardless uh, considering he's gone for half of the episode he gets a lot of screen time in it um which is wild to me so i'm just here to defend simon's edit and saying if you have to sit on a beach with george they need someone to go up and match that energy crazy because they love having someone against George from what we've seen in season six in uh, Brains Brawn. They always said someone coming for George. So Simon is just this next um, version of it. So, yes, yeah, so, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else I'm, if this is making sense, but the edit and Australian Survivor is always a little crazy, a little weird. And that's why I'm here to defend Simon, the nicest human I know, as a villain <laughs> in this edit. Um, whew. Queen Ashley out. <laughs> I love it. I'm here for that rant, all of it, every. Oh my gosh, it's it's needed, but like we have so many big big characters, but George takes it all. Um, we have Shawnee, who, who, who Queen Love, like she gets under edited compared to George. How how does Shawnee? 
Queen of confessionals. Queen of just quit. Queen of like running around and doing the social game. Get under edited. Oh, wow. Wow. Take it away. Social. <laughs> social. Like, I don't know. So that's where I'm at. I, love or hate George. Again, you probably can tell where I am hey. with him. Not a fan. Um, more so no. just, I think he's too much of himself. Um, I think he thinks higher than himself than anyone else does. And I don't even think he's a great strategic mind. He, he's literally just running around everywhere being in everyone's business, which might work for some people, but it's going to drive people insane. And, and it shows. When I found out he was gay, everything made sense. Same. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, everything makes sense I had, now. I had, yep. to, I had to pause and I was watching some friends. I'm like, wait, who, who are they referring to as the gay one in this? And they're like, George. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get it now. My favorite I thing is just how nonchalant it gets brought up. Shawnee's like, I lost, I lost my two girls. I can't lose the gay. And I was like, I was like, which one are they talking about? Fraser? You mean to tell me like... Australian Survivor <laughs> cast a homosexual? <laughs> what? Wait, Wait, Fraser's not gay? I don't know. That's what I, I thought. I don't think so. That's, that's where my brain went. I thought they were too. I thought Fraser was gay, honestly. I'm I thought, um, I believe, again, I'm so sorry if I'm assuming your sexuality. <laughs> I thought it was George and uh, Benjamin. I thought Benjamin was gay too. I thought it was, uh, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know these people. I'm sorry if I'm not, if you're not gay, if you're not great, if you are great, it is what it is. I just didn't know. I just assume. And you know, that happens, but I don't know you. And if you don't want to talk about your sexuality, you don't ever have to, we can always assume and just be in our minds what we think you are. You know, that might be best for some people. Some people might want you to be gay and you're not gay. And then, you know, who knows? Okay. I'll stop rambling. Um, gay. But, gay. <laughs> Point blank and period. Lana said gay rights here today on this podcast. As I, as we Thank should. Thank you. As we should. As we should. Period. You. But okay. Um, the George of it all for me. Let me just stop. The second he opened his shirt and had a veto tattooed on his chest, I was like, Ugh! cringe, threw up in my whole mouth. I was like, who is this guy? Don't in your like whole him. mouth. <laughs> You're old now. I love it. I did. I it. So I was just like, I don't get it. I don't like it. And then like him just I just didn't like the air about him the way he was talking. I mean, I get he's returner and I get he is back to, you know, prove a point. He came in second I I, I seen from the show and he lost to Queen Haley, apparently, who everybody calls the Queen. She's a, I don't know her, but she's a queen because women are queens, period. Um, we should be anyway. Mm -hmm. We are, and, and we are, we are. <laughs> and we are, we're your crown queen, but period. Yeah, <laughs> but so he lost to Haley apparently, and he wants to come back and try to get his win. And he thinks he calls himself King George, which I'm like, okay, sure, you lost, so how could you be the king? But that makes you like a prince, right? But whatever. That um, makes you a loser. <laughs> right. So I'm just like, hmm. But then he opened his shirt and I saw the veto tattoo and I was like, gross. Don't like him. And then he kept talking and I was like, the more he talks, the more I don't like him. Because he seemed like he feels like he's so much better at this game than what I from what watching this episode. I'm like, you're not that good at this game because first of all if you would but that good you would have won that's number one second of all you find yourself at the bottom of this barrel very early in this game like people already want to take you out but i think it's because of not because his threat level but i think it's because he just taught he's he's just very into himself and arrogant and like i don't know i just didn't find him to be uh, somebody who i would root for and like I said, I didn't watch his first season. Don't know him. Never heard of him. But from the moment he opened his shirt, I was like, <laughs> so, the th so the thing is, an Australian survivor has never been one to not have a producer's hand go through the whole season. Um, if it wasn't for the producers, uh, George would not have been the runner-up of the season. He should have been eliminated and voted out at least five times. And there were twists that prevented mm -hmm. him from being voted out. 
Yeah. And, like you know, very obvious twists uh, to propel him forward in the game. They're like, oh, you're not getting voted out. You're getting voted off this tribe onto the Broadway. other tribe. Woo, woo, woo. Like, uh, his what? number one ally gets like voted him. out and immediately gets brought back into the game for li quite literally no, no reason. Well, and that kind of brings me to this season, the 24 hour injury rule, which we'll get to, but like, it feels like the same thing. Uh huh. Because, oh, because see, this is my thing. And like I said, I'm not a whole um, expert on Survivor Australia. But I feel like if somebody is medevac and they can't make it to tribal then they're done right that's what i would think would happen but no 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 they said you you and even if you can't make it to tribal why can't he still be voted off like i don't understand but okay i guess we're jumping ahead to the to the competition let's, let's go to it because i feel like that's where we're at right yeah because the competition happens and they have to go over a rolling pin into a mud pit for what for what, <laughs> for what? why are we doing that for what they go through this mud pit and then they have to break through this is this the one where they had to break through the wall of sticks yeah the stick run through which is a classic australian survivor they had to break through the a route of sticks and then once everybody's through the sticks they get to get these puzzle pieces and Oh, mask. these bean bags, and then they have to throw these bean bags and break the thingies and tsh, 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 break, mm. yeah, break, break the glass. So, <laughs> George and Jackie starts off with the villains tribe, and the first thing they do is when they roll over into this thing, both of them just head mangles first. themselves. Like George goes head first into the mud pit. Jackie looked like she broke her neck to me. Like it was horribly it was very scary looking. Like I don't understand this challenge at all. Why did they need to roll into this mud pit? Like they could they, just jump could. into the mud pit. But <laughs> right. Yeah, they wanted the, the visual which for what? Again, it's like last season the slide for what? But the, the cube for what? We're taking out women for what? Just, Slides and fucking cubes. <laughs> this is so dumb. But <laughs> So, uh, and again, another challenge where the villains were a mess, like just a mess. And the heroes, Sa Sean, literally plowed through those sticks by himself in one go. He just was like, whoosh. When you're six, seven in a brick wall, you can do that. Apparently, you I've been told. I'll never know. Can't relate. Me, me either. <laughs> no. Can't relate. Five, five foot short, never ever will understand. <laughs> I mean, I'm six I'm, foot, and I'll never understand that. Like, no. no. I'll say I'm five eight, and absolutely not. Just will never do that. But like, he busted through these thick walls, like. <laughs> Like it was like that was, was breaking spaghetti, like right. It was so crazy, and the village drive was like couldn't get through. They was oh, it was crazy. Heroes win, easy. wins, yeah. easy well, win. <laughs> it's crazy to me for the JLP doesn't stop the whole challenge. She goes, "You guys keep going. You two side side." Hi. That was my biggest problem with yeah. the way that this challenge went down because you have two injuries, you stop the challenge. I've seen it. Why? Why? What do you mean? Like Survivor essay, they like when when the ball pet challenge and like we thought someone like uh -huh. their sternum, like they stopped those balls real quick once and they said, "You sit down, you sit down, you sit down, have a water." But this time they're like, "No, no, Sean, keep running. You're hot. We'll keep watching you. You two sideline. Like what? It, it oh, Jackie, are you okay? Yeah, like." No. Right, like, like it wasn't urgent, and it felt like it should have been. Mm, yeah, they literally played it off like that wasn't a big deal, and then to find out the results, I'm like, oh no, that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Like this challenge should have been stopped. Period. Mm. Point blank should have been stopped. But Absolutely. anyway, but they, they didn't. Heroes win, and mm. and uh, yeah, that Mark was that. And Jackie go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. They get a twenty. They get the 24-hour hospital rule, which if anyone's never seen Australian Survivor, it's the dumbest shit in the world. The rules state is you get 24 hours to go get checked out, even if it's a tribal council that night. You get 24 hours to come back. If you don't, you are out of the game. It could be exactly 23 hours, and you walk in right after a vote. You still get to stay the game. 
But if they claim, uh, deem you medically unclear, you're out right away. There's the rules. It's stupid. I, I think I it's... I don't get it. Like, I don't think that's fair, number one, because I could just be like, oh, I'm injured. Give me 24 hours and I miss tribal, so I know I'm safe. That's the easy way to say I'm safe. Using production as a strategy, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'll use that 24 hours to go to the hospital and miss tribal council. I just happened to miss it. Can't vote me out. I'm not there. So I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. No. But that's what happens with Jackie and George. They go to the hospital for 24 hours and they are no longer eligible to be voted out for tribal council. Yeah, no, um, they're not an option. If they're not there, they can't be voted for. So, but they, the strategizing is interesting. Cause they go, well, if, 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 if uh, Jackie does come back, let's vote for her. If mm-hmm. she doesn't come back, let's vote for Anjali or, mm-hmm. or Stevie. Right. That was the other right. one. Yeah. Stevie said, well, we could put Shawnee out there. So there's a few different names going out there. Um, leading up towards it, basically. Yeah. And everybody's kind of like, well, why? Well, it was interesting. And so when we get to tribal council, Jay, Jonathan says that um, they will not be back because George has a huge gash on his head and he's going to have to be stayed for, you know, testing and observations, all that sort of thing. Jack, and but he'll be back. He'll be back. Because he's fine, he'll be back. Because he's just they like him. They can't Hamilton, lose production favorite King George what? on day two because of an injury. Three. All right, but Jackie, yeah, because it's, he's George. Mm-hmm. Jackie, on the other hand, was not so lucky. She fractured her collarbone, and I'm like. Jackie fractured her collarbone and we don't stop this challenge. No. We just keep it going. Blood is gushing out this man's head constantly and we don't stop this challenge. No. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. But I want could I want to give Jackie the flowers that she deserves because I I when I saw the cast announcement. One of the people I was the most thrilled about seeing was Jackie because mm-hmm. I loved her on her original season. Yeah. I thought she was taken out way too early and she had so much potential. And she was that early season villain on what was that? Chance one. Two? one. One. Yep. I always get those two seasons. Oh, <laughs> so good. But I she was such an early villain that I loved watching mm-hmm. on Chance versus Contenders. And I was so upset. Yeah, to see her go, and I wanted to see how she could apply her poker skills a little bit more in the game of Survivor. Mm-hmm. I really do hope that if they do another returning season sometime in the future, which I hope they don't, not please do an all new season sometime soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like further down the line, I would love to see Jackie again because I just think there is so much mm-hmm. untapped potential. Yeah with her that we saw in her first season and she was just taken out way too early. I agree. And like for her, she really did want to play the strategic game the first season. And I think she was going to come and bring it in. Granted, she was aligning with Angelie and George. So like, you know, it was an interesting trio. She was trying to go in there. and mm-hmm. But like, I just don't think she ever got her true second chance to even play because no. of a damn cube. Like what? Yeah. for what, for what? Like, I don't know. Um, she fuck the cube. Fuck, fuck cubes, cubes fuck everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Amen, mm-hmm. sister. Cubes and slides. We don't like them. Not an Australia <laughs> survivor. No, no. I know. Rope, no. We, we've got a rope injury, too. So, like, a lot of just stupid design challenges, which, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I, I yeah. can go on for days with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think. Yeah, but it's important, though, this, this tribal. You think, oh, okay, we're just going to go back because someone left. The villains, being the villains, said, no, 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 no. So, J- no. so JLP gives them a choice. An option. Which Options. I guess has now been called, uh, according to the fandom wiki for Australian Survivor, it has now been called Pandora's Urn. I've never heard it, but whatever. Sure, he never said that. He, he said so, options. <laughs> so he said, you can proceed with the vote that just you just mm-hmm. did. Or you can all go home. Mm-hmm. 
And the villains, being the villains that they are, was like, you know what? Why should we only be down one player? We should try to be down two players and strengthen the tribe. So let's go with this vote. Because everybody knew where the vote was going except for Anjali. Anjali. Yeah. And she was yeah. going on like, yeah. Like she was one of the most she was, like, she was so it. vocal, like, do it. Cause you you know, we all have to get rid of the first pancake. Like, you know, said, nobody oh, the first pancake is always goes into the bin. <laughs> I was like, girl, who cooking your pancakes? Is all my pancakes come out perfect. What you talking about? Honey, I don't know what you're talking about. She, <laughs> she, right. She apparently isn't cooking the correct way. She's I, I, I don't let my pancakes sit. I just get a plate and eat them. Well, yeah. well no. She worked at, remember, she worked at CNN <laughs> for so long. Who knows if she's even made pancakes, pancakes. before? Because mm, I mean, apparently true. she she burns her first pancake. I'm like, baby, I don't burn pancakes. <laughs> My pancakes. Come you out not using oil time. and butter or something like and butter or like some Pam or something in a nonstick you know? spray? Come on, so, it's not that hard. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. See, I would understand the analogy if she said the first crepe, because the yes. first crepe always comes out bad. Because the pan, the pan is never hot enough. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, so we're not making crepe analogies today. We're, we're making pancake, pancake analogies, apparently. Regardless, Anjali is out in a unanimous vote. Yeah, and uh, she was fun. She had a, a good episode. She gave us one liner. She was uh, a villain. Delusionally entertaining. And that's what me. we need. Yeah, I, I'm here for it. Um, I don't know. Much like uh, her, her exit and entrance on CNN, you know, like probably not amazing, but it was there and people might have learned something. Who knows? <laughs> if you're paying attention, maybe. If not, you I, missed it. I am. Angeli. Glad you were here. Good to see you go. Not really caring either way. So, right. bye, oh, my. sis. <laughs> but it's funny because this next episode. Be- oh, before we move, because the first episode we all talked about how Angeli was delusionally entertaining or delusional, whatever. Um, Another one that stood out very much, and for one reason or the other, maybe wrong, maybe right, very wrong in my eyes, because I can't stand it, was the other journalist, Mike. Him and his very hard, hard, strat- like, oh my god. Like, I've, I, yeah. was, I was team Michael because... You can guess why. He was pushing for George. He was pushing for George. And I was like, Love you that. get him first boot. Like, I was so excited. And then he got injured. And I was like, never mind. That never was mind. the only thing I liked. That was, I mean, I was with him. I was agreeing with him and his push, like who he was pushing for. But yes. But Ashley, you have to. Yeah, I, I lost Angeli. We must now lose <laughs> Ashley. All the journalists uh, must go. All, all the journalists, journalists must go. All of us. <laughs> um, I have to head out and do some voting out myself. Um, so this has been so fun. I will be back next week. I will be back to talk about I was going to say, if your tribal ends, we might still be here. Oh. We might. It's a lot of besties, so we'll see. Oh, no. <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. We'll see you next week. We'll see you, we'll next, see you week. Guys next week. Um, <laughs> yes. I can't wait. Follow my Twitter. Listen to my thoughts. I tweet every now and then about Hot yeah. Sean, basically. So, yeah, um, yeah. Ashley B. Keen and Twitter, everywhere else. Uh, cool. You guys have so much fun, and this is so great. I need it. Love you. All right, love we'll see you. Guys. Bye. 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 Now that she's gone, no kidding. <laughs> now that we voted her out. No. Yeah. Now no. that we voted out Ashley, and now well, I feel like I feel like this is the correct distribution. You on the heroes, and me on the villains. <laughs> Wait, I kind of love it. Hold on. Kinda, ah! Wait, kind of love it exactly because I think that's how it plays out. A hundred percent, that's how it plays out. <laughs> no doubt in my mind, that's how it plays out. <laughs> that's how people will see it anyway. Even if we didn't think it, people will say it. Oh, I you, yeah. You might be a little bit more vocal than me, Logan. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> but anyway. The mic of it all, because I have to get back to the mic. Please, of it all. yes, I. Uh... Uh, I agreed with him pushing his push for George. I agreed yeah, I with that. Loved, loved it. it. Here for it. Like yes, push for George. George needs to go. But it was this next episode that I was like, "Sir, you're going about this 
the absolute wrong way. Absolute wrong way. It genuinely <sighs> made me question whether he's seen Survivor before. I don't think he has. I don't think he has. I don't think he has because no. anybody who's ever seen Survivor or knew anything about Survivor, you know what you have to do in order to get people to want to work with you. Even if you may, especially if you're the one saying the name and wanting to make the push. Like Simon was giving this man every opportunity to do what he needed to do to get the people on board and to get the people to trust him. But he was so shifty and his eyes were so beady and shifty and sus. Like, I was like, I would never believe you. No. I would never. He, he wouldn't look people in the eyes. He was just like making riddles about Simon Litcher's like, so are we doing this? I mean, what are you doing? Are you doing this? I mean, I want to know from you. Did you talk to somebody? Did you talk to somebody? Like, what? Did you talk to somebody? Like, <laughs> yes or no? Tell me. You want to work with me? This question shouldn't be that hard. If I say, if we're in the alliance together, you and myself, Logan, and I come to you and I say, hey, Logan. Are we still doing that plan? And you're like, yeah, we're doing the plan. Are we? Are we? Did you talk to the people you said you go talk to? Did you talk to people? Uh, is the plan going to go forth? Did we have a plan? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we like had a plan, Lana. We had a plan. We didn't. Oh, so now we didn't have a plan. <laughs> Just like plan. I don't know her. <sighs> I would I would turn around and quickly it's like Logan has to go. Like that would be my next move because how could we work together if you won't even answer a simple yes or no question? Did you talk to the people you were going to talk to? Talking? I was, I was wondering if you were talking to people. I can't do it by myself. Are you talking to people? Um we're talking. People? What are people? <laughs> Who are people? Like uh he was know. so annoying. I don't know. He was so annoying. I was very over him. And he just didn't do himself any favors, I didn't think, with how he just continued to be a little shifty in the conversations that he was having with people who were trying to work with him. But that's the Mike situation for me. George comes back, and everybody's like, George is back. And then that, it got weird. Gosh. On this man's face. It was I horrible. Was like, oh my. Damn. Oh my. It was like, wow. Like somebody just punctured a whole hole in his head. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. But then things got weird. Quickly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Ew. <laughs> They first was like welcoming him back and like, hey, George is back. Then they make a soul train line, I guess, and he walks down the middle and they're like, George, yay. And then he's lying in the water and they're cleaning him? What? The fact that Liz and Stevie entertained this. Is what? Why? 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 Why are you you're bathing? Feeding, you're feeding into his ego that is already <sighs> larger than the entire island of Samoa. Like what? I just I didn't understand. I couldn't even. I was very like blown away and shocked. Like how are? Why? Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we bathing this man? And I, I don't know. And like you said, feeding into his ego of him being the king, they give him a king's entrance and a welcoming back. Uh, baby, the best you go get for me is, oh, I'm glad you're back. Great, we got some food I'm over so here. So happy to see you. It's some bright or some fruit over there. Have a seat. 
that's literally all I got. Well, no, they didn't have food at the time. No, they didn't. Time. They didn't have food, but I'm just, you know, if I was being polite, you know, we have food here, but they didn't here, have food. Here, have my very comfortable spot in the shelter for now. For now. I'll be back yeah. later for my spot. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's literally all you got from me. I just yeah. don't understand it. I was very shocked by it, but okay. Ugh. Um, I, I loved the whole time. I loved Simon and Jordy. Yes, I, I love Simon and Jordy together. Period. Honestly, I do. I um, do. I didn't know how I was going to feel about Jordy coming into the season. I didn't love him mm -hmm. on Blood versus Water. Mm -hmm. um, go check out our coverage of that. I'll, I'll put it in. I learned how to do end cards, Lana. Oh, well, I or yes, yeah, so we can like I can link it. I, link I it learned in. how to do that. <laughs> Look at our um, podcast growing as we speak, right before your very eyes. Very <laughs> that, but um, yeah, I wasn't the world's biggest fan of Jordy on Blood mm -hmm. versus Water, and I was really interested to see. Okay, three episodes in, how am I feeling about him? You know, we're not seeing a whole lot of him, but I mm -hmm. do enjoy his dynamic with Simon. I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying that. And I'm also loving the addition of the other um, men on the villains. I don't remember their names, so I'm going to put up our graphic once again. Um, <laughs> being, um, who was Fraser. it? Fraser. Oh, no. The, the meat pack was over on the heroes. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, the meat tray. But they're, they like, um, yeah, they like Fraser. Fraser's a part of that. Um, yeah, it was... I like their dynamic together. I think yeah. I, I'm liking Jordy so far. I'm not not yeah. mad at Jordy being here. Yes, I I I I was I liked Jordy last season. I thought he was. I I liked the chaos that he brought. Um, I was a fan of that. I wasn't like the suit. Like he wasn't my favorite out of everybody in the cast, but he wasn't the worst. Like I, I, I could tolerate him. So when I saw he was coming back, I'm like, okay, I'm not mad at this decision. I understand why he's back, and I understand why he's on the villain's tribe. Um, this time around, I hope we don't get as many Joker references as we did last season. He's already said it once, which was we fine got it because in the he, intro package, which sure. And, well, sure, but we hadn't got it since. So I'm yeah. like, okay, good, great. So I'm not upset with this. Um, oh, you know, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. You know mm -hmm. who I just thought of from Blood versus Water that I would have loved to see on this villain's tribe? Khan. <gasps> I would have loved to see Khan I would have loved come to see Khan come back. That would have been a yeah, great that choice. Been, that would have been a good choice, too. I agree with yeah. that. Um, but anyway... Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I do the like, re reward. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying I do like Jordy so far mm -hmm. in this season, so I'm not mad at it. So yeah, it sounds good. But yeah, reward. we go to the rewards. Rewards. Push a log. <laughs> Push that log. Push it and don't stop pushing it. Push the log. I'm gonna be honest. The only matchups I remember are the women. Um, yeah, because it was Liz and Shawnee versus Nina and Haley. Yeah, and, and then Liz and Shawnee won. Whole, Liz and Shawnee won, and then the whole thing ends up coming down to Liz and versus Nina. Nina. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say I'm really enjoying Liz so far. Mm -hmm. I like Liz. That's who. Um, that's who Ashley brought up. Right mm -hmm. in the, in the standouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. really enjoying Liz as well. Um, I'm getting Liz and Sarah mixed up a little bit uh, from Basically. time to time, and I enjoy them both. So, like, cool. Um, but yeah, I'm liking Liz, but she's an Olympic pole vaulter, mm -hmm. which I'm like, okay, so we're stretching a bit with, here with the villain title, right? Like, mm -hmm. what? Why is an Olympian? I don't. I don't know anything else about her backstory, really. Um, but I was like, Nina, honey. I mean, she doesn't know that. Uh, presumably, she doesn't know that she's an Olympic pole vaulter. But I'm like, Nina, why? Why are you putting yourself against an Olympic pole vaulter? <laughs> right. Like, why right. are you doing that? Oh. But it was. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. So. Uh, the villains win. Yeah. 
first challenge win. Yeah. And they and- get an <sighs> o- completely overpowered reward. I agree. I agree. I was like, Fif- why? 15 minutes to raid the other camp. It feels like this was set up because they felt like the villains were going to win this. Because had mm-hmm. the heroes won, what were they going to go raid? Nothing. They have nothing over there. Like, just tear down the shelter and that's it? Like, I don't know. It felt really strange. Um, but they go over and they start taking basically all the food from the heroes that they won in the first reward. And then there we get to the debate between George and Mimi about whether the shelter should be like broken, broken down. Yeah. I was like, I understood where BB was coming from. Like, look, if we get to this point where we have to work with these people, I don't want this to be the reason why they come after us. We're, We're already, already two, people, two down. people down. So we don't know when this merge is going to happen. We don't know when they're going to do any of this. And so we need to be smart about our decision making. And it's like, I understand you want to take, you know, raid and make them weaker. Taking their food is going to make them weaker. And, you know, it's just like, but the shelter I thought would have been very cruel because it's like, we know we're in this place. We're all suffering. Mm-hmm. And to, 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 to tear down a shelter that they built just because you couldn't build a, a nicer shelter than they had. Like, yeah. it's just weird. I just, I felt understood Mimi. But I also understood where George was coming from too because he's like, look, we're trying to weaken them. We're trying to take them, make them, you know, feel like we felt for the last couple of days. We want to make, start, you know, make them feel like they have to start all over with nothing and not have any comforts. So I understood both sides. I, I understood both sides, but I was more on Mimi's side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. Because um, I couldn't be that cruel to people. Yeah. That's I just agree. not my nature. I agree with that. Um, immunity challenge. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we have to go back because once the raid is over, then they put try, they pour water on their fire. They're like, we're going to leave them with no fire as well. So they pour water on their fire. And Sarah, Sarah literally goes like, huh. Yeah. Like, hmm. Ma'am, if you're trying to ruin their fire, you pour two whole pots of water onto that fire. You make sure the fire that- is dead. Because, because literally- guess what? Like a phoenix from the ashes, the fire comes back. And that's literally what happened when the heroes got back to camp. They were like, oh, they threw out a fire. <laughs> oh, fire's back. No harm to fire. And it was like a waste of time. Like, you did that to make a message and piss people off for what? But it was all good. They they knew because like the heroes were very much prepared. Like they're gonna take all our food. They're not gonna leave us anything. And Mimi was like, "Can we just leave a banana? One banana?" <laughs> like uh, Mimi, I think Mimi was like understood the fact that we're all out here starving. We're all out here hungry. And if we feel how if we we want them to feel exactly how we felt for the last couple of days, that's so mean because I yeah. wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. And these people are not my enemy. They're just competition. But it was what it was. And their fire never got really put out, so they got it back. So it was really no no big deal. For <laughs> no big deal. Literally. It's like, oh no, we don't have food. Well, we're on Survivor. Specifically, we're right. on Australian Survivor, where there's going to be countless uh, food rewards throughout the rest of the season. So I'm exactly. really honest to God, not that worried. Not that worried. Exactly. No. So, now we can move on. <laughs> I don't remember this immunity challenge. <laughs> I would also like to say I watched all three of these episodes while incredibly high. <laughs> so I, you know, I did my best to remember things. Mm-hmm. This challenge is not one of them. Okay. Well, I can 
enlighten you with Please this challenge. Please, because that was a great thing. <laughs> the do. best of my knowledge, I just know that it was a puzzle at the end, and they had to put together a puzzle. Oh, I remember this again. Okay, so you have to. Yes, I remember. So you have to take the ball and you have to do it down the thing, and then yeah, that's like halfway through, right? The ball. Yes. That's when like they the had balls to. That they had in the last season, which everyone like the the injuries, injury well, this, ball. You gotta call it the injury ball. It was the big ball that they had to push over the. Yeah, the one like in Survivor South Africa where everyone had an injury. Okay, I didn't injury watch Survivor ball. South Africa. It it happened in Survivor South Africa. Okay. Um, injury ball, and then you had to t- you had to take that down, and then you had to lift it up the things, and then you had to roll it down a ramp, and mm-hmm. then it hit down the blocks, and then the puzzle. I remember this one now. Thank you very much, Lana. You're welcome. And it really didn't get that interesting until the end where the puzzles happened because two people had to do the puzzle and they had they were discussing who was going to do these puzzles. And George said, I'm an expert at puzzles. I could do the puzzles for the villains. And Which so he was very good with puzzles on Brains versus Brawn. I just wanna mm-hmm. I wanna say that as well. He was mm-hmm. a he was a big puzzle master for the brains. And Stevie says, I can do puzzles as well. I'm really good at puzzles. I'll do puzzles. Which Stevie lo- also was, for context. And George says, Stevie, I don't think we'll mesh well. I don't want to work with you. So I'll rather have Fraser do it with me. And Stevie's like, oh, okay, sure. And so Fraser and George are going to do that puzzle, and Nina and Benjamin are going to do the puzzle for the Heroes Tribe. And the heroes get there first. They start the puzzle, and they're working like a tribe united. Mm-hmm. And George and Fraser gets there, and it's just not coming together. Stevie is on the outside telling them what to do to help them out and he's doing it correctly like he's telling them correctly and so then they're like could we swap out and Jonathan's like no (laughs) you cannot these are the two set and so Stevie can only um, coach them on how to do the puzzle because they were not getting it it was not coming together for them. Haley is coaching on the uh, on the Heroes Tribe and is helping. And they're Benjamin and Nina are figuring this thing out. And of course, once again, the Heroes Tribe has won immunity for the yeah. They won again. You know what that means? Time. Nina's not going home again. <laughs> Congratulations. That's all I care about. Nina's not going home. Nope. And there we have it, folks. Hero Tribe wins. That's the end of the episode. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. The heroes win. Um, villains are back again heading to Tribal Council. And they're scrambling. And they're scrambling. And what they always do because now people are kind of trying to decide do we do George Mike of course is on this George spiral and people are down with it for a minute Simon is definitely down with it uh Jordy was down with it they're very okay with um with um George being the target but you know who wasn't down with it Shawnee Shawnee was not down for that Shawnee said you know what George is a huge target and if he's a target, he's a shield. If he's a shield, yeah. he's a shield for me. So there's no way I want to get rid of George now because he's a shield for me. And I can understand that. This is my I get thing. It for sure. I get it for her, and I get it for sh- for her. She's the three time player, yeah. and I think she's kind of like she needs all the shields that she can get. Yeah. And I understand that. Uh, this is my, and I know this is what we say we disagree on our thoughts and feelings yeah. for Shawnee. I don't particularly, I don't hate Shawnee. Let's put that on that. I'm just not a fan right now because I don't like her smug face. Sure, okay. I, I'm just not a fan of the smug face that she does. Like, and I feel like she's the kind of person that she is. Attracted to the people who's just like her. 
Like, mm-hmm. I feel like her and Liz are like birds of a feather. Like, yeah. they are peas and carrots because they're so much alike. Yeah. And, but Shawnee is the, like, the dominant one who mm-hmm. will tell Liz what to do. And Liz will go along with it and make it look like it's her idea as well. Like, we thought we talked this thing out, but she's really just doing Shawnee's bidding. Um that's what it looks like the trajectory for their friendship is going to be. But I feel like they like that because they're just so darn alike. Like that's just, I don't know. It's just something about maybe it's just this week's. I just wasn't feeling her. It could change. I think Shawnee is an open, one of those people who I leave open for me. Like their feelings could change how I feel about watching them play this week. I just felt like she was too paranoid for no reason. Like nobody yeah. was thinking. Only person really was wanted her gone. What at this week was Stevie, and he said her name. But I feel like she was like everybody wants to be gone. Everybody wants to be gone. Everybody, nobody's thinking about you. Nobody's talking about you. And yeah. she's just too paranoid. And she was playing so scary. And I don't like. Yeah. I guess in that moment, I didn't like that. No, that's completely fair. I will agree. I didn't love the way that Shani was playing this week. Again, working working with um, George, I do understand it. For her game, however, I would rather personally, she didn't. yeah, You're right. but I understand. I understand it for her gameplay, and like she, she says, like the people she needs to keep around are Jordy, Simon, and George, and I'm like, that's exactly who you need to be keeping around for you. Like that's perfect. Mm-hmm. So, and so I, I definitely understand, and I believe she was planning on using Anjali and Jackie as well to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. They're both gone. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, who do I need to just like protect myself with? So I definitely do understand it. This is just the way that Shawnee plays. Honestly, it, it you kind of outlined a lot of it. Um, for me personally, Shawnee is one of my favorite players of Survivor ever that I've watched. The way that she can navigate social situations and navigate strategic plans is just really impeccable and there's like i i would go into further but it would like it would require a lot more to discuss because there's just so much to discuss from her time on champs versus contenders and from her time on all stars like there's just a lot to talk about but if you've seen shawnee play you know that this is this is kind of how she starts is you know the bubbly the big personality the surrounding herself with the like-minded people you said all of those things and that is that is how she she operates so for me i i appreciate shawnee i love that you're keeping an open mind with her and i hope that you grow to enjoy her just as much as i do i mean yes i think right now i'm just like eh, it's just she seems very typical and she seems very typical and i'm like i guess i want it more from a returning player sure. not the typical behaviors not the typical styles not just the status quo but sure. like i said open mind she could possibly be more and better you know yeah yeah when as the weeks go by can we go to tribal yes because i'm gonna say this is the one moment this week i liked george okay George, is, mm, go ahead. I, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I, I, this is what I like about Survivor Australia, and this is what I, I could compare it to to <coughs> America Australia. I mean, America Survivor, not America Australia. What the heck? America Australia. <coughs> um, you know how this last season of Survivor. Excuse me. We talked about how boring, <clears throat> how predictable all the tribal councils have been. We are at episode two. And I can say there has not been one boring tribal so far. Never and, and even in this next episode, tribal again is still very much live very much like are you kidding me like it was amazing so this tribal i i'm living for the live tribals that are going on in survive australia mm-hmm. so go ahead i i just 
yeah, so this tribal comes down to George versus Michael. And, okay. you know, I don't love George, but mm. George put that man in his place. And I was living for it, quite personally. I thought it was everything I needed and more. George just antagonizing him in just the perfect ways to make him just paranoid and go off the deep end. I loved every moment of it. I really, truly did. And he literally turned that tribal totally around on Mike. Like, completely changed it. Like, it's like, why are you so mad? And it literally, like, that's all he had to say to piss that man off. Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? I mean, I just want to know. We haven't talked. Why are you so mad? But it's just, it's so crazy. Yeah. I was just like, I, 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 that literally, that literally was how you do a tribal. How you yeah. get the target off of you yeah. and put it on somebody else. And that's and- the sm- that's the game player in George. That's the survivor knowledge. That's the returning thing he knew yeah. what to do that was even how he operated on brains versus brawn like that was very i i rag on george but i think george is a very competent survivor player in the way that he is able to so effectively mitigate his own threat level mm-hmm. in a way that you don't always see from a lot of players especially returning players especially someone as high profile and as recently on tv as Mm -hmm. George is. So I like props to George in this moment, still don't love George as a human or as a character on this show, (sighs) but giving him his his flowers here because he ate. He did. He ate, he ate that whole thing. And the next eliminated player was Mike because of how much. Bye Mike. (laughs) Sorry. I won't miss you. Won't miss you at all. You were no match for George said in confessional or in while he was voting, he was like, um, I'm a legend in this game. You will never be remembered. I was like, oh, but also you ate. True. Though. But also Kinda true. true. All of it. Ah. Was very, all of it was very true. Like very. nobody will remember him. No. But period by yeah. J- Michael. That's it. So then we jump into episode three. <laughs> oh, this is the craziness of it all, I'll tell you. Um <laughs> I, I don't know. Cause see, this is where I have an issue well, not even an issue. It's like everybody knows ex- well, George knew where he was and what he feels his role is in this tribe. So he's trying to scurry around to everybody and he's in everybody's conversations. Every time they look up, here he comes. They try to have a conversation. There he goes. He's just in everything. And then, so that doesn't stop in this next episode. (laughs) It's not going to stop for however long George is on this season. Just, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, because, um, Okay, I just want to go to the the reward challenge because really nothing really really happens with a lot of you know. We get back a couple backstories. Mm-hmm. The girl on Heroes, I can't remember her name. Hold on, uh, Paige. Paige. I like Paige. Paige is lovely. I like Paige. Paige is lovely. She. We talk. We get her bull riding stories. Great or bucking horse stories. Everybody there's likes Paige. One, there's always a person like this on Australian Survivor, and that's what I enjoy. It's like there's always a, a cattle rancher from out in the middle of the outback every season. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love that so, for you. So the reward challenge, you have to – it's um, single-person duels. You have to run around this course, grab a sandbag, and then put it in your square. Mm-hmm. So this is where the – villains always seem to outsmart the heroes like they don't play like 
I don't understand why, first of all, why the heroes always got to get first pick and then let the villains decide who oh, they I go it pick. Went back and forth. It, it did, but it always seemed to be that way for them. And okay. they just, I don't know. Like, they they just get out strategized every time when stuff like this happens. When it comes to these, you pick who goes against the other side. Like, they just yeah. get out. Because the only person, well, first, let me talk about the flick of it all. This woman, I've never seen this woman before. But she's outstanding. <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. And her body is killer. Like, right. I wish, I wish I had a body like Flicka. Like, <laughs> her body is amazing. But let's, 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 let's just, so okay. For, for context for you, Lana. So Haley won Brains vs. Braun, right? George was runner-up. Flick was third. Okay, it makes sense. And played a very, very dominant game for what she could on that season, mm-hmm. where unfortunately it was very dominated by Haley and by George. But I mm. love, I love Flick. Big fan of Flick here. Flick. Um, Why did like, I call her? I called her Flick. Did I say Flick? Flick no, that's the whole. Like- she, she's the ho- Flick is a horse, and I'm sorry. Oh, good. Flick. I meant Flick. Flick. Just Flick. Her I like her. Something, but that's her nickname, I think. Something like I like that. Flick. I like her. Felicity is her actual name. So Flick makes sense. That makes sense. I like her. <gasps> I, I just I just like her. But she went out first, killed, like, you just, come on. was nobody for to take her. She's amazing. And uh, I don't remember the order. I just know Sean and Sh- uh, Stevie because they outsmarted putting. The like, hero send in Sean, and then the vi- smartly, I will smartly, say smartly, the villains because, go Stevie because they never. I they don't want to put Sean against Simon because plus now is, they wasted Sean. They may have gotten right. the point, but they can't use Sean later on. They can't use Sean um, later on. So it was just very much strategic out. Sh- out yeah. strategizing the hero's tribe. And the last <laughs> one comes down to oh no. Mimi. Paige and, and Mimi. Paige, Paige and Mimi. Mimi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um which was a, a fierce battle. It was fierce. Come on for yeah. the come on for the fierce battles of the women in this week. Mm-hmm, Hello. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um but Mimi pulls it out mm-hmm. and the villains win. Yep. And what do they win? A giant jar of cookies. A huge thing of cookies. Great. Love it. Great for them. Great for them. So yep. they take their cookies back to camp and everybody's like, let's take these cookies to the beach and eat them and enjoy them. And George says, sure, I'm going to go find a coconut and go pee. And he's off. And he is idol hunting. And he finds the idol. And then we get him. I'm going to tattoo this next to the one already on my chest. I'm already like. (laughs) If he puts another one on, I don't ever want to see it. He will. He will. I can guarantee you he will. I don't want to see it. Um, but yeah, so he finds the idol. He's very excited and uh, he goes back and I don't understand how people didn't see that idol in his pocket because. So he's wearing cargo shorts. <clears throat> the coughs are contagious, Lana. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Sorry. He's wearing, car- it's fine. He's wearing cargo shorts and there is just a thing in the shorts. And I'm like. We don't see this big bulge in his pocket. Okay. Okay. But all right. okay. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. If somebody walks away from me and for a long period of time and they come back, I'm checking everything. Make sure I don't see bulges on nothing. Because that's just me. Where bulges shouldn't be. Yeah. Correct. We're saying. But, okay. But they just, you know, they're like, okay, he's there there's you know he's dead and he's he's very excited and he's 
so happy for these cookies. He can't believe how delicious these cookies are. So great. So wonderful. <sighs> then people start talking about how there has to be something in the cookies. It got to be some kind of advantage or idol or something in these cookies. Because this big old jar of cookies can't just be for the cookies. It just cookies? can't be for the cookies. Got to be something. There's Everybody's gotta be something talk- other than cookies. Got to be something other than cookies. And they're talking cookies. about it. Cookies. Jordy's like, it can't be nothing in these cookies. Why would they put something in the cookies? That's crazy. That's too predictable. Jordy, you played Survivor before. Right. I the rock. Oh no. I'm sorry. The Grimms. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. Not the so, rock. The rock and Adele just met each other for the first time. Great. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And she's in love. She's happy. Um <laughs> I mean, he is the rock. Ugh, okay. Um, anyway, so Jordy's like, it's not, it should be anything in these cookies, right? It's not. But other people are like, I think it's something in the cookies. We go to sleep. It's night. Everybody goes to bed. And then Mimi goes in the cookie jar and sticks her hand all the way down to the bottom of the cookie jar and she just crunching cookies and crunching cookies and crunching cookies no. her hand is she is elbows deep in the cookie jar trying to feel for something and she finds no. <laughs> and she's like I don't feel anything and all of a sudden something that looks very much out of the Blair Witch Project Liz sits up and right behind her and she don't notice that the woman is behind her looking at her digging in this cooking jar. And we see Liz like "Mm." that's Mm." suspicious. And then rolls back over and lay back down like okay just saying what I saw. Everybody wakes up the next day and everybody's like why is these cookies much shorter than like where the cookies go? <laughs> then they look at the bottom and like there's a whole bunch of crunch cookies there. <laughs> Who crunched the cookies? I don't there? think JLP would have done that. It didn't look like that yesterday. That's suspicious. <laughs> That's weird. So weird. And so, of course, now Liz got to tell what she saw. Like, I saw Mimi elbow deep in the cookie jar and crunched the cookies. And so everybody knows now that Mimi yeah. was the one who crunched up these cookies and she didn't find anything. So as they're sitting there doing what they normally do throughout the day, Simon looks into the cookie jar and was like, huh, something in that cookie jar is a little off. That cookie don't look like a cookie. (laughs) So he was like, okay, all right. So he skillfully walks over, just like he just wanted a couple of cookies. He went there. Of course. He just wanted a couple of cookies. He grabs a couple of cookies. And grabs whatever he feel, he sees in that cookie jar, puts it in his pocket. Well, yeah, puts it in his pocket, goes and finds out that this is an idol. It's an idol. And he slips it into the back of his Speedo and places it in the crack of his butt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's where he puts the idol. Come on, butt crack cookie. <laughs> butt crack cookie idol in this butt crack. Hashtag mm-hmm. butt crack but- cookie idol. <laughs> <laughs> Not hashtag butt crack cookie idol, but that's where he puts it. And then he goes and tells Jordy that he has an idol. A butt crack cookie idol. A butt crack cookie idol. And he wants to use his own ju- to get out George. And Jordan's like, I don't, you're lying. You don't. He's like, yep, it's in the crack of my A. And he was like, Jordy says, I want to feel it. And I'm like, 
Excuse me? <laughs> Did he just tell you it's in the crack of his butt and you want to feel it? I'm sorry. What? What? <laughs> What did I in that moment? I was like, "What the heck am I watching right now?" He and he was like, "Okay, yeah, it's right there. You can feel it." He said, "You want to feel it right now?" He was like, "Yeah, I want to feel it right now," and he feels it. I was like, "So we got a lot of butt. This is the butt stuff." Ashley and I were talking about more. It was just more butt stuff happening in this episodes of Survivor Australia than I was used to. I'm sorry. In America, I'm, I'm American. On American Survivor, we don't see this much butt action happening. No. If we ever. don't. If ever. But Jordy was like, I want to feel it. And Simon says, okay, it's right there. And Jordy says, all right. And he felt the idol in the crack of his butt. So there we go. Hashtag Brotherhood. Butt crack. Brotherhood. <laughs> there. They're they're brothers now. Hashtag brotherhood. Hashtag <laughs> butt crack with the idol. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's very weird. Oh but boy. Oh. Yeah. It was just weird, but you know what? There it is. <laughs> there it is. And he, so he has an idol and he wants to use this idol to Idle out George. Well, that's after. Wait, do we? Just, oh no, no, no. We have to go yeah. to. Yeah. We have to go to the immunity idol. Well, he wants to use it correctly. He said he wants yeah. to use it correctly this time because of his last seasons where he had two idols and he got voted out with two idols in his pocket. Yeah, he famously went home with two idols. So As we he's heard in the intro package, but yeah. Yeah. But he's like, he wants to do it right. That was his thing. He's like, I want to use an idol right. I would love to get out the person who got me out. But whatever happens, I want to do it right. I want to use my idol correctly. Sure. So we go to the immunity challenge. Now, um, you, do you remember what this immunity challenge was? Not a shot in hell. <laughs> okay, so this the idol uh, immunity challenge was that they had to take this ladder. Remember the ladder, Vaguely. and they had. To... <laughs> I might have fallen asleep during this immunity challenge. I'm gonna be real honest with you, Lana. I might have taken a real quick nap. <laughs> I remember tribal, but I don't remember the challenge. I mean, they just had to take a ladder. And they had to first use the ladder to get something down. And then they had to take it and make a bridge and go across it. Uh, and if you couldn't get, if everybody had to get across, if everybody couldn't get across, you could take it back down and make it as a bridge ladder. Once you get it, everybody across, then you had to, what else you have to do? Uh, I forgot what else you had to do. Well, it doesn't really matter because the heroes won yet again. Shocker! <laughs> Shocker! I'm sorry, y'all. This I'll leave, I watched them all at the same time, and it's like running together. <laughs> Me running too. Together. I can't oh, watch so it live and take notes. It was so. But, I'm so sorry. We we are not giving you all the information of everything. But we have but, given an hour and forty eight minutes of entertainment so far. That's what I can period. tell you. Period. And the hero, we're giving you the, the information you need to know. Who won? The heroes won. Period. And once again, Nina is safe. Yay! Nina safe! Great. Love it. That's all, that's all I care about. Nina being safe. Truly, yeah. But after so that, yes. Oh, you wanted me to go on. Okay. Yeah, I, I did. That was kind of that was that was definitely my cue to Solana. <laughs> I hey, thought you were about. To, I thought hey, you were about Lana. To do that. Cool. So back at camp, Lana. Lana. <laughs> <laughs> back at camp, that is when uh, a lot of the you know scrambling, the scrambling is going around. Everybody's trying to figure out who they want to vote for. Everybody is thinking right now is between Mimi and Stevie because Mimi crunched up all the cookies. She can't be trusted. You know, 
they're not here for that. Um, uh, and so Stevie, of course, is like Mimi. She got to go get it off me. I'm sipping Lizzo. But anyway. <laughs> Sorry. We watching the Grammys at this time is not good for me. Um, so. Yeah, they Mimi, um Mimi Mimi and Stevie. Stevie. Yep. And so then this is where Simon is like, look, he takes Jordy aside and say, look, what if we get everybody to vote for Stevie? And then we vote for George and I idol I give play the idol for Stevie and George goes home. I want to do this. I want to do this. And he's like is this the right time? Jordy's like, I don't know if this is the right time. We should do this. He wants to tell Shawnee and he wants to tell um, Liz about this plan. He's like, I don't know. And he's like, we should do that. We, Simon really, really, really wanted to do this. Really, really, really wanted to do this. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, And so he's like, well, we'll decide a tribal. We'll figure it out. At tribal because I really want to do this. I have to say this is exactly what happened on Brains versus Braun. Every mm. single time, oh, we should get out George. Oh, we need to get out George. We need to get out George. Oh, wait, there's a more immediate target. Maybe we should target this other person. But what about George? Every time, that's how we got to final tribal. Like Crazy. honestly, it's it's so frustrating for me because I'm just like, it's gonna be the same thing that happens again. To be mm-hmm. the exact same trajectory. Like, yep. and let's be honest here, Mimi is a public target now. That's an easy vote for another evening when you lose tribal again. Or mm-hmm. when you lose the challenge again, you have to go to tribal. This is the time you have the plan. It's a pretty decent plan. It's a really good plan. Together. If you know the plan is Mimi overall, you use that idol on Mimi, gain Mimi as a number in case things shift moving forward, because she's going to be indebted to you. And she's a newbie, so it's not like she knows the game that much compared to those that are returners. Mm -hmm. You use the idol, save Mimi, take out George. Done. You have Mimi in your back pocket if you need her, and a vote, you can vote her out later if you have to. Although they don't know that George also has an idol, and if second he would have used it for Mimi, I'm sure George would have used it for himself. Most likely, but they are unaware of that. So. They're unaware of that. So yeah. So there's that. But and so we get to tribal, and tribal is Jordy Sean Sean Simon is looking at Jordy like I want to do this, and Jordy's like mm, I don't know I don't. He's like, this is good. Because Jordy is still siding with Shawnee on this, that George needs to be there to be a shield for them. And, which I get, it makes sense. But I'm like, Jordy, you're not that big of a threat. You're not a Shawnee in this situation. This is good for a Shawnee's game. You don't need a George as your, you don't need George as your shield if Shawnee's still there. I was like, you need Shawnee as your shield. You don't need George, yeah. Shawnee needs George. And Shawnee needs... So you're just playing into the game for Shawnee, not for you. Because you don't need George. George is gone. Shawnee's always there, too. And you can always bring her up before they look at you as a one-time returning and then a three-time returning. So, yeah. But he's still listening to Shawnee and agreeing with Shawnee that they need George. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And Simon is like, I need this. We need this. I need this. Let's do this. He's like, we can flip it on Mimi. We can say, let's vote out Mimi. You know, we'll say Mimi. Everybody vote out. He's like, I don't know. I want to tell the girls. So Jordy gets up and go tell Shawnee and Liz about trying to get out George. Shawnee and Liz don't want to get out George. So they're like, no. No. And so he tells Simon, they said no. So he's like, so this whole time, Jonathan is like, um, Simon, are you worried that something is happening? That part of the conversation is happening and you're not part? And he's like, no. no. And no. And then Mimi starts talking 
and gets, I literally said, talked her way right up out of this game. Because she was very confident she wasn't going. Yep. And but, guess what? Guess what, Mimi? You're gone. You went home. That's a very niche reference for someone watching this video. Um, if you got that, we can be friends. But um, yeah, Mimi is voted out. Unfortunately, the second woman of color voted out in the first week of the game. And the third woman eliminated in the first week of the game. Yep. Well... Uh, nothing much has changed in Australia, huh? <laughs> I, it is what it is at this point. Yep. Well, that's week one. We go into that's week two one. with mm-hmm. eight villains and 12 heroes. It's crazy. So, yeah. So. Although the villains were very, just very, they knew what they were doing. They would go dominate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we wait on that dominance to happen. Uh, yes, but but well, that's that. But, yep. Join. We'll be back next week to talk about the next three episodes of Survivor Australia. You know what to do if you like our almost two-hour conversation about Survivor Australia. Yeah. Like, follow, share. Sharing is caring. Follow us on Twitter at the cup underscore reality and get, check out when we drop recordings or when we're going to go live. We'll let you know. We talk about everything from Survivor Australia to Eurovision to drag everything. So, to wrestling now. To wrestling now. Every month you'll get a wrestling topic if conversation. You like hearing Lana's voice, you get more of it. I'm just saying, wrestling, as I said on our podcast, wrestling is more reality TV than a lot of the reality TV we're talking about oh, right it's now. Theater, and I love every it's moment of it. Very much. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> we love it. So, yeah, so we're talking about everything. And if there's something that you would like to talk about that you're a fan of that we talk about, you know what to do. Hit us up in our DMs. You can hit up the cup or you can hit up Logan or myself, and we'll try to get you on the pod, you know? It's li- it's quite literally happened. Mm-hmm. Somebody so, said they want to talk about something. A couple and people. And they're here now. So Yeah. So if you want to if you want to talk about anything, let us know. We'll see what we can do. But that, share. Share, share, share. Bye bye you guys. Cheers. 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 Um, cheers. Cheers. Buy my cup at my Etsy page. Link, link below. Link below. Etsy. Buy the cup. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Goodbye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.